You worry too much. That's why your hair went so gray. Could you resist a man in this uniform? I don't think I could. You're there for your brothers. Yeah, that's all that really matters. Get out of the way. Okay, you want to play? Let's play. Hey, move! Hey. You trying to get me killed? I will bury your ass. Mueller has arrived. Woo. Last flag flying. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, thank you very much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Last Flag Flying. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, click that subscribe button, click the bell so you can be notified, and give me that thumbs up. And let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now we have Last Flag Flying. And what it's about is three friends that reunite after 30 years that served in the Vietnam War that are coming together because one of them son died in the Iraq war and they have to bury him now these three friends are Lawrence Fishburne Steve Carell and Brian Cranston three very 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 popular men in Hollywood right now and it's also being directed by Richard Linkler now if you're familiar with Richard Linkler's work he did uh, Boyhood which came out a few years ago and did get a lot of recognition in the award season and the brilliant thing about that film is that I think it was filmed over a 12 year period focusing on just one boy and kind of just like follow his life, you know, each summer, each summer, and I just kind of mailed it all, all together in one film. And that's like unprecedented. I don't think any movie has taken that long to film. And that's just like a hell of a dedication that they put towards that movie, which, you know, which gives um, which makes me give Richard Linklater a lot of respect. Another movie that he did was with Jack Black that came out a few years ago by the name of Bernie, which is a true story. And I actually remember when that movie was first advertised, I had absolutely no interest in seeing it or whatever. But my mom saw it. She loved it and she recommended it. And I loved it, too. It's a great, cute little movie based on a true story. I mean, the thing is just adorable. I can easily say that Bernie is possibly in my top 200 favorite movies of all time. And you may be like, Brandon, 200, that's a lot. But, you know, I see a lot of movies and I collect a lot. But anyway, you got Richard Linklater and then you have these three gentlemen, Lawrence, Cran uh, I said Lawrence Cranston, Lawrence Fishburne, Brian Cranston and Steve Carell. And they, you're re they're reuniting because they have to bury um, Steve Carell's son. And I will say this movie is being marketed as a comedy, drama and war. And that is a very good description or, you know, I guess three words to describe the film because it is funny. It does have to do with war and it is drama. But at the same time, it's just kind of hard to mix those three elements together without the film being too daunting. And I liked the film for the most part, but there was one card in the sin that just kind of brought the film down that I will touch on in a second. But easily the best thing of the film is the comedy. You know, seeing these three gentlemen from all completely different walks of life reuniting 30 years later, I mean, they're completely different from when they were like 18, 19, 20 years old. And it's just very funny. I mean, you have one character who is a now a pastor. You have one that owns a bar. And then you have another one where we really don't even know what he... No, we do know what he does. He, he's a stocking clerk. And I don't, I don't want to uh, pick apart which each, you know, who is who. You'll just have to see the movie for yourself. But you probably already know that from the trailers and whatnot. But the best thing about this movie is just seeing them how so different that they are when they come together. But they still have something to like relate to. And that is their bond that they built in the uh, Vietnam War uh, 30 years ago. And, you know, that's just uh, hands down. That's the best thing of the movie. I was laughing my behind off just seeing them, you know, being themselves. It's not like they were just cracking jokes. It's just men being men in their late, you know, 50s or, you know, 60s or whatever. You know, I ate up every moment of it. But uh, this movie is also, but while it's also funny, this movie is also sad because, you know, there's some great acting, especially, and, well, I'll go ahead and tell you, it was, it's Steve Carell's son is the one that died. And of course, Steve Carell is one of, is mostly known as a funny person, and, you know, 40 year old version and, you know, Anchorman, Anchorman 2 and all that, the legend of Ron Burgundy. I can get all that, but he can really act, as, act behind off. 
um, and really present, you know, true dramatic effect on screen. And he really did do that here. There was times in the movie where he made me laugh and there was times where I was like, oh, my gosh, dude, like, I feel so sorry for you. I mean, this is horrible. I mean, there's one scene in particular towards the beginning to where it's like, oh, man, how am I going to make it through this? You know, um, any any parent or, you know, loved one out there that has lost somebody in war, you're going to be able to relate to this a lot and empathize with the characters. Like, seriously, you know, it, it, it is it is very sad. Towards the end of the movie, when the credits were hitting, there was some people in the film, not in the film, but in the audience with me, they were crying. You know, there was kind of, I, I kept hearing sniffling and, you know, you know, all of this right there. And for some reason, the film did not affect me that way. And I hate to be insensitive what I'm about to say. And first, I just want to thank you. Thank Say thank you to all the men and women uh, and their families that have died for this country and protected us. You know, thank you very much. Um, and I, I, I said protected us, too. And I, I'll touch on that as well. Because I, I, this movie does not clearly state if this is a true story or not, but it's taking place in 2004. So I don't know if it's an exaggeration of the truth. If you do know that, please let me know in the comment section below. But while, you know, the movie is very funny in the beginning and it's funny throughout, it is also very sad because, you know, um, he, he's lost his son and he has to bury him and he's not handling it well at all. But the biggest mistake in this movie that just brings this down all the way to maybe this could have got recognized in Oscar season or something like that is that the movie is way too long. It is comes in at two hours and four minutes and they could have easily, easily, easily knocked 30 minutes off of this movie and it just would have been fine. It still would have had a great impact, but I was just sitting, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but I was just like, oh my gosh, can this movie already end? Like, why are you putting these unnecessary scenes in this movie? We have the premise, we have the plot, we have the story, we have the characters, we know their objective and we know where they're going. They're going, trying to go from A to B, but instead they want to go to A1, A7, A23, a 19 just gets go from a to b and they just keep throwing these scenes in there so the very beginning of the movie steve carell finds brian cranston and then these two gold gentlemen go and find um lawrence fishburne and steve carell is kind of basically just letting them know what his situation is and hey my son died you know we need to go uh you know get the body and you know i want to bury him and da 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 but once they get to the once they get to the body, which in the nearly the first act of the film, there's really no movie left to tell other than you need to get to the burial site and bury the movie. And while they're doing that, I mean, of course, there's going to be, you know, crazy mishaps here and there during their journey. But it was just too many and it was just completely unnecessary. And I just did not understand why. When I saw I, what was today, Friday, I saw this last night, Thursday uh, at an early screening. And the movie started, it was scheduled to start at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And it did start at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I just remember sitting there just like, oh, my gosh, this movie feels so long. What the crap is going on? And I've never done this. But this is a first for me. I actually got I don't want to, you know, if, if you pull your phone out in the screening or whatever, they're most likely to kick you out or the security will come and like charge you up in front of everybody. It really just so you don't want to do that. That's bad. So what I did is I got out of my seat, crossed the aisle, went all the way down the stairs and went to like the little hallway or whatever, turned my phone on because I just had to know what time it was because like this film just seemed like an eternity. I turned my phone on and it said 8.34 and I'm just like, oh my gosh, we've only been watching this movie for an hour and a half or an hour and 34 minutes. How long is this movie? So I real quick, and I was still paying attention to the movie. I went to IMDb real quick and saw that it came in at, uh, was it 124 minutes? So two hours and four minutes. And I was like, damn, we got 30 more minutes left. And so I cut my phone back off, went to my seat, you know, and I tried to enjoy the rest of the movie. But uh, the movie is enjoyable for the most part. There are were a ton of people in this theater that enjoyed it much uh, than I did. I can tell just by the way that they were, you know, reacting with the sighs and the crying and whatnot. You know, and it did not affect me that way. I've cried in movies before. I've cried. I cried in that movie Warrior, the MMA movie uh, that came out, I think, seven years ago in 2013 with, uh, uh, um, gosh, I forgot his name, um, Tom Hardy. Uh, 
I, I forgot the uh, I forgot, but I cried in that movie. But it just didn't pull my emotional heartstrings like it did for everybody else. It was a great movie. I love the characters. I love the way they interacted with each other. It was funny. It was sad, and it kind of had an abrupt ending as well. But the, this movie was just far too long, and it really just you know, man, uh, it could have been so much better, but it was just too long. It, it, I was ready to go. I don't mean to sound insensitive, but because I mean. I would have probably given this movie like an 8.5 or 9 if they would have cut, you know, some time down. But I'm going to have to bring this down to um, what I want to get this movie. I'm going to oh, uh, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, a 7 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Last Flag Flying or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Become one of my subscribers so you can get all the content that I have to provide. And also click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads. Also go to my website, guys. Check me out there, justmyopinion.net bookmark it i do have written reviews i really appreciate it and also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy for you guys by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for last flag flying directed by richard linklair starring Lawrence fishburne brian cranston and steve carell and before you go don't forget that my name is brenda keith avery and that's just my opinion. Peace.